Hello again, this is Leontes with LK404. Hey, this is LK404, and we're uh, we're back for game five of the uh, the epic best of five between uh, Leontes, who's playing multicolor on the right side, and uh, Alhazard, who's playing mono, uh, mono purple on the left side. Yep, so we've played with the same codexes each time, but each game has kind of unfolded a little bit differently. To give a little bit of history about how the matches have went, the first two games I got completely destroyed, like 20 minutes, first two games just annihilated. Um, scoop after turn four, basically. Game three, um, our previous video, you can check that out. I ended up taking that one, um, making some adaptations to how I handle the early game. I got a really early tech one kill to prevent Stewardess of the Undone from annihilating my board. And then uh, game four, I think I did a similar thing and I ended up um, winning pretty handily. So now we're at game five, we've made our adjustments. We know what the opponent's trying to do. We have a, a firm grasp of how this matchup plays and uh, we'll see who can take game five and close out the set. Um, so this whole set took about two hours to play, um, all five games. Um, so we're looking at you know tournament stuff for the future for Codex, and we're trying to figure out like time frames. And we wonder how fast can these games actually be? Um, hopefully blowouts don't happen as much as they have been today. And it, it might just be that the games take a long time in Codex. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm thinking potentially tournaments go best of one, but if people end up playing a lot faster than I think they're going to. Maybe they extend, ex, uh, expand out to best of three. Yeah, I think best of three within one hour could be feasible, um, maybe. All right, so Plasmodium actually turn one. So Plasmodium is an interesting card. It's a two gold, four, 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 four with haste, but it's in the future. Four cast three. So it doesn't come into play for another three turns unless he does some, uh, some time rune shenanigans. Yep, yep. And yep. when you play Plasmodium, you're saying, you're saying, yeah, I'm doing some time rune shenanigans because it's not a very good card if you don't do that. It's just too slow. So here comes uh, Blue Coat Musketeer and Drek. So the point of the Blue Coat in the squad lead is so that it has 2 HP, Nullcraft can't kill it, and then I can shoot it back with the uh, the, the ability that, that... Sorry, Blue Coat. I say Blue Coat because I play a lot of blue. That's Careless Musketeer. That's his cousin. Um... <laughs> It's, uh, it's got an ability where you exhaust it and you deal one to your own base and then you deal one to a unit or building. So that's a way that I'm going to deal with Nullcraft. Although Plasmodium's not actually in play yet, so you can't, poss you, uh, you can't ping the Plasmodium, you can't attack the Plasmodium. Correct. And so the only thing that you could ping with Careless Musketeer right now is the base. Yep, which in which case I would just, I'd just hit it for two with his basic attack. Okay, so yep. purple going first can play Plasmodium and sacrifice the board presence against red a little bit. I could have done something like, uh, you know, Madman and get like one damage. If I was playing mono red, I could take three to base right then and there, but um, it's okay. If he gets some time rune stuff going, then that Plasmodium is going to do a lot of work. Let's see what he plays. I expect to see maybe Hardened Mox, Fading Argonaut. Yeah, he only got four gold, so I'm assuming he's, uh, yeah, he's accounting for the worker gold. Mm hmm. Harden Mox. Harden Mox. And probably Tech 1. Yeah. Yep. Floating gold again. Mm hmm. Harden Mox and Squad Lead. So now there are two things on the table that can't die. You have something in the future and something that's indestructible. Mm hmm. Such as purple. And I only have, like, yeah, I don't have good attack showing right now. I can't really do a whole lot. Um. Careless Musketeer can only deal one, so it would only remove the, uh, yeah, the right. armor from the Mox. Or I can attack the Mox, have him die, and then nothing really happens. Nope. Drak so, can't really threaten a board right now or anything, so... Yeah, unless you're looking to deal base damage, there's not a whole lot to accomplish here. So I play Blood Rage. And... Let's see... Do you use the uh, Careless Musketeer to overdose for one? <laughs> Both players take one. I know, right? It's a thing I could do. It's maybe a thing that Red could do. I'm struggling here because I know that I need to squad lead my Musketeer if it's going to survive a Nullcraft. Um, there goes Scorch. I don't think I'm going to have enough gold to play that this game. Um, multicolor, it's a very expensive card. I build tech one for two gold. Two gold to, for the uh, multicolor penalty. Yes. And I will, yeah, do that. I'll try to get gold back. Um, I'm thinking now, though, after playing against purple a bunch, I'm thinking it's good to put your value tech ones or tech zeros into the resist slot. Um, if Stewardess of the Undone is the thing that you have to worry about, oh, here's me just saying, go ahead and play Nullcraft, because I... 
Ah, oh, what is this? If you can bring Plasmodium in, then that means... Yeah, there we go. At least get something for it. Yeah. So anyway, um... So if Nullcraft kills it, at least you'll draw a card. Indeed. But then here comes Prin, probably Time Spiral, to bring out the... Uh, uh, oh, it's a stewardess, yeah. So this is what I mean. If I had put the ogre in the lookout slot, it would at least cost Alhazard four gold to make the play, right? Um, and then Time Spiral costs just one, um, but then he'd have to go down on workers to do this play, and I, I just didn't do that. So he Time Spirals the Plasmodium, brings it into play. That's going to end up... And Plasmodium has haste, and so yeah. it can immediately attack. Yeah, it's going to haste and kill the, uh, the hero, the Hardened Mox is going to kill the uh, Careless, Musketeer. Careless Musketeer, and it's not looking good. Here, let me discard that guy. Pretty sure he dies. He should be dead, and I should draw another card. Why does Plasmodium have a damage? Because it swung at my hero. Oh, it did. Okay, so that's how that... Okay. Yeah. And so now we got a mid-band print. we got a stewardess. And, uh, yeah, not looking good. I'm at tech one, though, so maybe I can get some centaurs out. It is turn three, after all. That's the goal. But, yeah, I would have made I would have made purple go down on, on workers or something if I had just put the ogre in the lookout, and then maybe he would have bounced another guy. So I think the trick, really, to stopping Stewardess of the Undone is to use the lookout slot. Make it cost four. It's a really inefficient card in that case, but then also... Just try to minimize how many... Um, oh, changing your techs. Yeah, I changed my tech. Try to minimize how many tech zeros you have out at any given time. Um, but yeah, Plasmodium is really dangerous. Really, really dangerous. I needed to have a blocker out to deal with it so that I didn't lose my tech building. And that was kind of the idea there. How I had to suicide drag a little bit. I have a lot of cards because he bounced a card to my hand and then I got Technician. So we're going to play... Centaur, Blood. Ogre. And I got two more gold. Yeah, you got a Technician draw and the Ogre went back to your hand. Got to so play, you bomb, with, gotta play the Bombaster. Yeah. Starting hand of seven. Or hand of seven. Yep. So Worker and play three guys. Um, and I go down to four cards. No, you, you draw a full. Oh, do I draw? Oh, I can only draw two from there. You had you had a hand of seven cards. And so, oh, yeah, wow. So, worker, three guys, you go down to three cards, draw back up to five. Yep, there I go. Good, I see a second centaur, which is really great. Um, and he played the stewardess of the undone, but didn't get the tempo play of destroying the tech building. Right, so I'm still able to play the, the centaur. Because that's, that's the thing, is if you can remove the, the threat and then get rid of the tech one, now you're way ahead as purple, and then you just build tech two, like, immediately. And uh, he probably still does that. Look at the board position that he has. So pretty soon we'll probably see battle suits, um, just to amp up the value of the stewardess. Maybe a second stewardess comes out and bounces that ogre back to my hand again. Seven gold for Alhazard. Let's see, I don't see a battle suits in that hand. For uh, workering forgotten fighter. Yeah, that, that could get rid of uh, Bombaster too, though. It just, like, Purple's bouncing ability. Is that Stewardess 2? Yep, that's a Stewardess number 2. Yep. So, again, I could have made him waste two more gold this whole the whole course of the game by just putting that guy in Lookout. Like, So, just that's a thing that I'm going to do from now on against Purple. So, hard lessons learned. Because at least if I'm paying 2, he should pay 4 to remove it and get a guy. So Mox pings one damage to Centaur. Takes off the armor. And then Plasmodium will finish, right? That's what it looks like. Yeah, Plasmodium trades. Very good. Um, he can kill Bombaster with the one stewardess, take two damage. So I think I need a tower soon. <laughs> Another big hand. As long as I keep getting value and having the gold to play stuff, I can keep chumping out my patrol. He didn't make tech two yet, so... That's good. Um, and that Prin will attack my tech one. He, yeah, mid-band and before the attack so that he gets the extra damage. So that two gold he's floating, maybe he doesn't have that gold if I played lookout correctly. 
it would have been spread out over two turns and made think, his that also decisions. that also means he could have still made those plays because he has two extra gold it does but then he wouldn't be floating two so where he can easily build tech two yep and level heroes and like having like an extra two gold in the early game is a lot of that's a lot of money double bone collector all right you're gonna play tokens or you're gonna bounce tech zeros i'm gonna make sure they're skeletons um so i get my, my blood tech two going i'm like you know what i'm just gonna get crash barrows because if i can just summon garth with uh interesting that you tech bone collector when you're on the back foot though because bone collector yeah needs to swing to be good yeah it's maybe hooded executioner is a better play here um, in which case I could get rid of, I could do the same tempo thing that he's doing, but I can hit tech ones with that. And because hardened mocks uh, can't be sacrificed, is it he hits an, it doesn't target immune. him, it hits the next thing up. Maybe I thought that it would hit him, and it's, maybe that's why I didn't get bones, but or uh, hoodeds. But hoodeds would have been really good here. That would have been a really good um, back foot anti tempo play, right? He would have had to sacrifice the stewardess and the undones. Yep. And it would have been my decision, so I would do the. Uh, Although Bone Collector is better if uh, if you get charge in your hand, or like if, if you have some way to give them haste. Right, which is another aspect of this deck. I like to use the Max Band Drac with Bone Collector. Yep. That way I, I bring a bone out, and he swings for four with Max Band Drac, and summons a skeleton, so I'm not really all inning, right? I'm, I'm actually putting dudes on the board while, you know, protecting myself and getting technician. Yeah, now we see the battle suits, though. So those stewardesses are now three threes. Yep, and Mox is a two, because it's a soldier, too. Um, so he's going to take one real damage, and then um, I suppose the Hurt Stewardess will swing. That seems like the best thing. Staying in this, but you're probably right, though. The Hoodeds would have been better. In that case, I would not have been able to make Tech 2, though. I would have been doing, like, that's true. five gold into one Hooded, and then... Yeah, you would have been a gold short. Yeah. But it's a good play, though. Five gold for a 3-3 three, three and kill whatever. And since purple mostly just plays heavy things, it doesn't really it doesn't have any one-drops at all. You're typically hitting something of value. Even if you hit the weakest thing, it's still a big unit. Doing purple math. Purple math. Think about time and... Yeah, but I, <laughs> draws I, I don't, and I don't know that that probabilities. I think that Nullcraft is incorrect. I would, I would pull that back. Because Nullcraft it doesn't really do anything this no, turn. No, it's not going to hit anything. And it's not a blocker either, because uh, it can only block other flyers. Yeah. I mean, granted, I play those, right? I have Blood, I have Glider. Yeah. Yeah, and you are at Tech 2. I do only have 8 workers, though. I had to go down. Um, did I? No, I didn't go down. I think I'm fine. But I'm only going to have 8 gold, so I can't do my Garth trick. So I will not be able to get a Crash Barrow or a Glider in immediately. Unless I drew one. I see that I have three gold, three gold, like set up, a little bit of a tell, um, but <laughs> maybe that's uh, two gold for a hero, three gold for a centaur, three gold for a barrow or something. That's that's what that looks like to me um, from a spectator position. I like to have my turn set up beforehand. Like, yeah, you, you're supposed to react to things, but typically like I can change my play pretty easily and change my tech out real fast if I need to do something. That's why I think this game can be played a lot faster than people give it credit for. Um, if you watched the stream last night, um, today is the 20th, so we had a little short stream to test out my streaming capabilities at home on the 19th. Um, I was playing my turns pretty quick. I don't know. It just seems like once you get a firm grasp of all the things you can do in this game, um, turns don't take as long as they as they sh as they need to. Yeah. I think I think he's gonna go tech two here. His board is great. Like this is where this is where you go tech two. I think so. And the the scariest thing for him is you playing more tech two things, and so I think. Before he does, yeah. Yeah, so he definitely needs to answer it. Oh no, he's just. Oh, he's. That's right. He's, he's using uh, Prince Max Band to uh, remove it fr to remove that Bone Collector from the game. So I think he get. Does that mean he gets the Tech Two kill here? I think he does. So then the the Mox and the Nullcraft will do three to kill the Bone Collector. So you were wrong about that not being right. Okay, and, and that's... now there's five damage to Tech Two. Oh yeah, and that is huge. That is a huge swing. And tech one also destroyed. Wow. That's... So purple bounces, man. That's that's the, the most dangerous part of playing them. That's not even a tech two play. And he gets a hero's hall with his final two gold. That's incredible. Yeah. Although he doesn't go to tech two himself. Right, but what does it matter if I... It's going to take me two turns to get to my tech two. It is, but like, you get to rebuild it for free. He still has to find the four gold. Yeah. But I mean, what do I do here? 
um build a tower or something uh yeah <laughs> yeah build a tower that's what you do cardless things that don't require tech um maybe make a garth and get a skeleton out so i i can't see my hand i see i see one centaur yeah i think um i don't know if i see a yeah let's get rid of that stewardess <laughs> let's do something let's just not wait around much longer to play things um Blood Rage. Blood Rage. So you're the, not playing the Centaur. The 10th time. And, and Calamandra, who's just a 3-2 strong, uh, like, strong stats. 2-3, yeah. Oh, sorry, 2-3. Yep, and no. if I can level her up, I can get here. I can discard cards to get kills. So one thing, too, if purple's bouncing a lot of your stuff, Calamandra's discard 2 to stealth isn't really a cost anymore. And you get you just get the benefit of it to snipe a hero or buff her up but i don't have in this deck i don't have any ways to give her plus one counters so she's not a tech destroying assassin like she is when you play mono green but really um i played her because my my plan against purple is to play a lot of drac and garth synergy so i need to just um have calamandra die so that my other guys are not on cooldown yeah also note that tech two building should be rebuilt uh no because well it's rebuilding next turn you, no, build, you, no, you, you just you just had your turn. You should have put the uh, put the die back down. Yeah, my tech one will rebuild. Oh, he destroyed. They bo both oh, got it. Got it. That's what I'm saying. He can take time yep. to go to tech two because because he destroyed both. Yeah, yeah it's going it, to take two it. turns for me to get there. Oh, that's awful. It's really awful. <laughs> so that was totally the right play for him to do, to use the print max band to uh, eliminate my my patrol zone. So again, if I had played Hooded Executioner, I would have been able to eliminate one of the damage sources, and maybe he wouldn't have got both tech buildings down. Maybe. But with both stewardesses on the board, I'm, I'm okay with Blood Rage and uh, Squad Lead. So <laughs> here's a Seer. Going to add a Time Rune to Prin so she doesn't die from baiting. And then if, if that happens, my Bone Collector comes back into play. Um, then she attacks, I believe, to get a Rune back. Yeah, Battle Suits makes the stewardess trade with the ogre. Nullcraft and Hardened Mox can easily kill Calamandra where she's sitting as well. Getting immediate use out of the hero's hall, picking up Geiger. Yep, when you're not at tech two and you need you need a way to get two heroes. Oh, maybe not. Um it's a good plan. It's like a little it's like a cheap ghetto version of tech two if you're not ready to get to tech two yet. I think he gets to tech two now though. This is like the best time. Yeah, there's no reason he shouldn't go to tech two, I don't think. Because he he only has three cards in hand. Like, what is he what is he gonna play that is better for him to spend his money on? Other than heroes, add-ons, uh, tech buildings. He has seven gold, and he has a max band hero, but he he decides to go with Veer instead. Yeah, Veer. Yeah, Mox and Craft. It's three damage. Um, the tower ends up killing the the Craft, and who cares about what happens to Mox? But luckily, no Craft is dead, and that's the point of the tower. He gets to peek at the top card of the deck because of Veer. Yep. He veers into his deck. <laughs> Pretty nice. Um, the, the the main strength of that, it seems kind of strange um, why that's important, but you can also, is it at top you, band, you can pay one gold to swap the card? Yep, you can pay one to swap the top card of the deck with any card in your hand. Yeah, and the reason why that's cool is because if you see the top card is not a thing you even plan on playing that turn and you're not really worried about it, but say you don't want to go down on cards, is a really important thing you want to play next turn, or you don't have enough gold. You can swap the card out, and then you can draw it next turn and then be able to play it the following turn when you do have the gold to afford it. So it's kind of a, a, a weaker version of Stash in a weird way. Yeah, but then the other thing you can do is his mid-man lets you play the top card of your deck. So if you don't want to go down on cards and make sure that you yep. draw five, right, you can swap the card from your hand that you want to play. Say Alhazen wants to play that Sentry. He can switch the sentry to the top card of his deck, use Veer's mid-band ability to play the sentry from the top of his deck, and still have three cards in his hand. Yeah, which is uh, also really good if you're going for some sort of like Knights of the Conclave type plan. You can pay one, put the knight on top, play it for free. Indeed. Yeah, because you, you pay the cost, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, pretty strong. So you just get a little bit of that advanced planning. Good for a combo deck. So I wonder if there's some kind of fun uh, future law thing you can do. <laughs> running Heroes Hall with Bigby and Veer and just being really obnoxious with dream Making combos sure that are super unreal, but they are real because you have hand manipulation. Or maybe you just keep your plan really flexible. You tech one of each type of, like, you, you don't ever tech two ofs. 
because you know you can hit yeah, things when just, you need them. You just stay really toolbox. And there are a lot of toolbox cards in this game. Things like detonate and chaos mirror and undo and assimilate. And, and it's okay to draw those things and not play them sometimes. Like you don't play all the cards in your hand every turn in Codex. It's just a thing you don't really do. Um, so I'm in a pretty pretty horrible position here. I get my tech two rebuilt. I can still only make one hero. Um, I make a centaur because I got a block up. His board is Sentry, Seer, Midman Veer, Max Band Prin, Harden Mox, Battle Suits, Bone Collector is missing. Rambaster trades with uh, Seer. Yep, one damage to one damage. Yeah, and we've talked about how dealing five damage is so much stronger than dealing four damage. It's why four health is such a big deal in squad lead, because it means that the opponent has to deal five. Yes. And as we see, like, Centaur, yeah. Let's go to zero cards, because I'm cards. getting annihilated here. I think I see a Crash Barrow in my hand, though. Just shuffling my deck now in case my, my Musketeer dies. But the sad thing is... Uh, Oh no, that's not too sad. I was gonna say, um, if I have a crash barrow and discard pile, undo this. This was the big play. That that undo was so well timed. Um, that's one way to bounce tech ones. And there goes the centaur. And because of that, he's gonna get through my patrol zone. And he's probably gonna be able to destroy the uh, the tech two again. Yeah, if that happens, that's just game. There's no way that's not that. That was such a, a good play there um, to just eliminate the final. The final bastion of hope that I had to block up and get to my Crash Barrows. And Musketeer's got one health. This is this Mox kills it, yeah. And then we go all in with heroes and sentry and we find a way to kill tech two and tech one. And I think I just call it here. There's just no way I'm gonna have enough time to come back. Deals three damage to tech one. Yep. Yeah. And you, you're back to only being able to play tech zeros. Oh yeah, I got I got two cards, tech zeros. Like it's just too much. I think I, I look. Plays a seer to give another rune to uh, to Prin, and so Prin can exile what like whatever tech zero you have that you can put on the table. Prin removes two counters and yeah, exiles just gets rid of it. Yep. So I did not deal with Prin, and I got too many things bounced in the early game. But hey, I have eleven gold and no, 12, 12 gold. That's a lot, right? That <laughs> was purple, eliminating all my stuff. Um, just surgically destroying things. Harden Mox doing a lot of work. He didn't even go to Tech 2 this game. That's impressive that he had such lockdown through uh, early game presence, battle suits, Sears with uh, yeah, Sears of the Undone. Yeah, but he kept you from going to Tech 2, which is the important part. Yeah. Well, I paid for it. So that's that's where I, I screwed up, right? Is I paid the four and then was never able to utilize it. So yeah. he didn't even pay the four. He just stayed on early game tempo. So very, very strong purple from Al Hazard. And that that was the thing. You know, he got tired of getting destroyed by Crash Barrow, so he's like, Let's 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 figure out now he goes tech two because hey, it's time. Um and he's got six gold to float for next turn to go tech three or something. Um another century. But uh, that's that's adaptation. That's just the realization that if, if I can play Crash Barrows, I can make a comeback. And if I can't, then that's going to be it. I think I see Centaur Centaur in my hand. Probably Tech 2s. Moving, uh, moving Veer up to Max Band. Getting, yeah. Getting his uh, token. The, the mech token, yeah, yeah, with the two forecasts. That's like a 6-7 untargetable... Yeah, I'm not sure why I haven't scooped yet. I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm just letting him see what he can get done and, and what he can play. But I can't even play anything. I think my whole hand is dead draws. Yeah, and you can't even you can't even max out Garth to put a tech one into play. It just doesn't work. Nope. Because you have you still have to meet the tech requirements for his max band. Indeed. So I work for a centaur. Bye. No need. I think I, I threw away Crash Barrows. Yeah, this is it's such a dead turn that this should have just I shouldn't have even like done it. Yeah, anytime you have a dead turn, that's almost always like it's curtains. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and I'll just never get my tech. To, uh, yeah, this is just formality at this point. This game's over. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your base takes one. I'll discard Drac because that's what you do. And then, is that enough for lethal? I think that's lethal. It's just lethal to base. Yeah, I have 12 yep. health. So we played it out. Yeah, so 
I had a worker a centaur me showing that like yeah it just didn't didn't get on the board and the undo was too timely the the um the undo and the print max band were both brutal. very strong and then yeah I got two ogres bounce so yeah I just got I got beat I got outplayed that game and I think it would have helped a lot to look out my ogres um, to just keep purple from having enough gold to to play things like max band print and and just have a lot of options like that. Because you just kind of have to do that, and I didn't. I, I have a hard time dealing with Plasmodium. I think the first game in this series, I got annihilated by Plasmodium, because it's hard to figure out a response to uh, to the, that. Well, so the response is to kind of build up, in my opinion. It's like build up and block up, and Red Starter does not do that well. Exactly. Whereas I would just play a Young Treant and Squad Lead against it if I was playing Green or something. Yeah. And then just okay, uh, hit a Wisp with your Plasmodium. Exactly. Feel free. You know that's okay. But instead, it was Plasmodium hits hero and gets a, gets two levels for for your hero. And yep, and, and red has no way to deal with it until it comes into play. Well, exactly. I mean, nobody has any way to deal with it until it comes into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Purple can't put time runes in other people's stuff, can they? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's only your own. You're gonna play Seer and then I'll oh, just remove a, a time rune from your print and she'll die, <laughs> and then I'll lose my draw step. <laughs> anyway, so Al Hazard takes it. Um, Mono purple versus Feral blood necromancy in a three two. Um, best of five wins at three two. Um, but yeah, if you guys want and we have time and the bandwidth, uh, maybe we'll upload this monster of a file at some point so you can see the entire set and see the the blowouts and the adaptations. Um, but yeah, we're still learning and uh, maybe and we made a couple mistakes throughout. But hey, it's still pretty pretty evenly matched. And all the way hopefully through. it was fun for you guys to see the uh, the wins from both sides, seeing that the games can turn out very differently. Like depending on just what the draws are, what you tech, even if you're playing the same decks. Yeah, totally. And then just making those decisions. You see here that the, the key was just killing tech buildings. Kill tech buildings, deny your opponent options, give them dead draws, and that's how you press the advantage in this game. But just, you know, building up and swinging at units and making trades, it kind of stalemates you a bit. You have to deny your opponent opportunities. You have to kill those tech buildings and apply the pressure that way. And I, I think that's one of the core lessons I learned from, from losing this set to Al Hazard. So, um, so yeah, um, thanks for watching the video and hopefully we'll have some more content for you guys later. Um, this is Leontes and LK404 signing off. All right. This is LK. See you.